So yeah, thank you Oxford team uh, for organizing this symposium. It's been a really wonderful event. Uh, my name is Jonathan Mack. I'm doing my PhD at uh, Engineering Design Center in the University of Cambridge. And uh, I'm looking at how do you design engineering infrastructure using Bayesian networks. So I'll give you an overview of kind of what Bayesian networks are and how we can apply them in real life. So my work is uh, sponsored by BT. It's a telecoms company in the UK. Uh, now we look at uh, telephone, internet, and uh, TV. But if you have any problems with internet or TV, don't come finding me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my problem. Um, but in large, uh, we're looking at infrastructure systems. So these are things like power grids or uh, the road networks, which provide a public service. And typically, they have a very long lifespan, so something over 10 years. And uh, characteristically, they're very expensive to replace when they're broken. So uh, one of the big problems with BT is that they won't, don't want to keep replacing their services, and they don't want to incur a massive loss. And by way of example, we have the Iridium satellites. Um, and in 1991, they forecasted that by the year 2000, so in nine years' time, they would have 40 million, year, uh, 40 million users in nine years. And then what they did was then they launched like something like 64 satellites in the air, uh, massive cost. And guess what? I don't know if you, anyone can guess, but they lost 4 billion US dollars and they became bankrupt. So these are the problems that uh, BT are looking at and they obviously don't want to lose such a massive amount of money and obviously they don't want to become bankrupt. So, the traditional op engineering optimization way was we tried to find the biggest peak. So if you imagine a 2D solution space, we find the biggest peak, which represents the kind of best solution that we have. And so in this kind of illustration, what you see is we try to converge into like the best point. Uh, but what we're realizing now is that we don't necessarily want to find the best point. Sometimes it's actually better to find a smaller peak and then it allows us to enable uh, to move to other peaks more easily and at a lower cost. So what my work is looking at is which actual peak do we go to and what's the best uh, kind of solution space that we should be looking for. And uh, if you imagine this is a 2D solution space, uh, imagine if you have 100 variables, right? This becomes a very big problem after that. So what I'm trying to use is uh, Bayesian networks. So this kind of links into uh, perhaps Ming's uh, earlier talk. Um, uh, and by example, this is a medical Example, so what you can see here is um, nodes and edges. So nodes are in the big boxes, and uh, these represent your different variables. And then your edges, are these are arrows, and these represent causalities or dependencies between your variables. So what we can see is something like um, your dyspnea, which is your difficult in breathing. Um, so if you have bronchitis up on the upper right, um, that has some causality into dyspnea, perhaps. Okay, and then so in each one of these longer black rectangles, these represent the probability of you having a certain symptom or a certain disease based on the other variables there. Okay, so I want you to look at different boxes, in particular the black long rectangles there. So what you can then do is have observations in your, your busy network. So say um, you now see um, this, this patient has come in with dyspnea, and uh, what you say is like, do you have dyspnea as present? And then you can see how all the other probabilities update over the whole network. And through that, you can see, well, perhaps they have bronchitis or perhaps they have lung cancer. And then you can start having more observations as well. So say that they went to Asia, they have their smoking, they have some x-ray, and then you can say that, um, you can say that bronchitis is present and it's 99% uh, unlikely or uh, lung cancer is absent there. So that's how uh, we kind of use Bayesian networks. So uh, we generally build these networks to try and classify or to try and, uh, try and understand through reasoning uh, of the problem. So what other things have these uh, Bayesian networks been used in? Uh, they've been used in computational biology, bioinformatics, a big, uh, big field there, and I think quite a lot of people are looking into the bio space. Uh, so things like um, if you have a new drug, what kind of drug compounds are most effective against different ligands or what are different diseases, what drugs are uh, most likely to be useful for different drug uh, diseases. Uh, image processing, uh, I find what was quite interesting was law and legal reasoning. So uh, I thought, like I just read quickly into this and um, apparently what you can do is you have lots of different cases and you can reason through uh, how the cases works and, and then from that, you can see whether that uh, the, the, well, the criminal is, should be convicted or whether there is some causal reasoning behind uh, the case as well. And in finance, a lot of people are trying to use this to see uh, how do you predict the stock, stock market. So saying that based on these different uh, variables or diff different things that are happening in the stock market, um, where, where the stock price is gonna go up or not. 
And for my work, I'm interested in using this for infrastructure decision support systems. So um, perhaps in some of the earlier talks, we talked about how AI might be taking over the whole world. Uh, I, I do actually kind of think it might happen, um, but I am also in the par uh, part where I'm trying to build these tools to help people uh, make these decisions using different data sets as well. So um, some of you might know, I went into NUS for two months last year, and one of the problems they were looking at was waste to energy systems. So waste management in Singapore, obviously is a really small area, and how do you most effectively manage the waste over the whole Singapore? So you see here, this is a map of Singapore, and they've divided it into six um, different regions. And what I'm using to try, uh, what I'm using Bayesian networks to try and address is uh, what kind of technologies are the best to, uh, to use over Singapore. So they have uh, things like uh, mechanical, biological systems, they have recycling, and how, what I'm trying to characterize what kind of technologies are the best to be used in the whole of Singapore. Um, they have questions such as decentralized and, uh, versus centralized. The centralized system is basically where they put all the waste into one centralized site. So perhaps they'll push it all into this yellow site in the middle there. A decentralized site or decentralized uh, system is where instead each individual region has their own uh, waste processing site. So is it better to push everything together or is it to have a separate uh, processing sites over the whole of Singapore and which is most effective? Uh, another question we're looking at is um, obviously expansion. So uh, we're having, making more and more waste uh, over the years. How do we expand in different sites? So how do we upgrade? Which, which site do we upgrade in over the, uh, over the years? So I'm looking at maybe 10 years spans and uh, what technologies, what capacities do we upgrade for there? And then this is the work I'm doing with BT in the UK. So uh, this is a quick Bayesian network, one of the preliminary Bayesian networks that I've done. Uh, so on the left-hand side, you see uncertainty in the, in the system. So for the whole UK, we're looking at what are, like, say, the household, what's the demand we're, we're predicting in the next 10 years? What, are the, uh, what is the, well, in the preliminary case, what's the copper price? These are the uncertainties that drive the system. And then in the middle layer, we have the system itself. So we're looking at the different geotypes over UK. So places like London are very different to places say like Cambridge or Oxford, or it's very different to um, like a farmland in the middle of nowhere. So do you extend a fiber optics cable all the way to farmland? Because that's really expensive. And the problem with that is, once you put that into the ground, then you have to dig it back up, right? Or like, do you leave it there forever? Or is it better for you to just to give them 5G, like give them satellite technology, instead of actually giving them a fiber optics cable all the way through? Then uh, we have an options layer, which is basically where I classify which technologies to use. So given all this uncertainty in the system, I say the probability um, of using this particular class of fiber optics um, based on given the other uncertainty in the system, uh, which we've tried to predict and classify to see which technology is best to use in a particular area. And then in the last rightmost column, we have the performance of the network. So say we want to have some speed or some particular speed of the broadband or some particular cost in that particular area, uh, then we can put that in as well and then uh, see which particular option that we should use. And what's really interesting is that uh, with Bayesian networks, uh, as opposed to optimization, traditional optimization methods, um, traditional optimization methods, you perhaps, um, you started with input and then you got some output. And that was kind of a very linear one-way process. Uh, instead, what we can do with the Bayesian network inference is that you can go the other way around as, a way, as opposed to, oh, so you can go both ways around as opposed to just going one way. So instead of uh, seeing all my symptoms and then coming with a disease, I can come with disease and then see all the symptoms that are associated with it as well. So the questions I'm looking at uh, for, for BT are also which technology to deploy. So in different areas of the UK, uh, I, I, I look at the different uncertainties and then try to understand which technology should be the best, uh, where to deploy it, um, and then when to deploy it. So we're looking at 10 years timescales. We do, might not want to give you all the fiber optic, or we don't want to give you all the speed in the world. Actually, apparently, we can give you something like one gig and throttle it to 500 megabytes. So instead of having to plant a new fiber optic system in all the time, we can just give you the one route line and just don't give you all the, all the fiber optics that you can actually get. Um, so there's questions behind that as well. And then 
just rounding up towards the future, why I think or why I've chosen Bayesian networks is because hopefully it's been intuitive. Hopefully from that very quick medical example, you've been able to see how all the different nodes uh, are affected, how, the, how when you see an observation, um, uh, you can see how all the probability updates as well. Uh, is easy to implement with less data. So a lot of the talk is about machine learning, which requires a lot of data. And actually, one of the limitations of my PhD research is that I don't actually have that much data. I've been going to company and they've been like, well, this is all the data you're gonna get, right? So um, one of the good things with the Bayesian networks is you don't actually need that much data. Uh, it can handle qualitative and quantitative data. So um, in a lot of previous optimization, perhaps that I've done, it's all been very mathematical. Uh, but now I can also do qualitative inputs as well, and that can uh, also be a part of the cat uh, categorization. Um, so where I think this kind of stuff is going, or what is most interesting is, how do you use these systems to support human decision making? And uh, by a quick example here, if you see the video, um, this is actually a helicopter. But if you notice, I don't know if you can see, this helicopter is actually flying upside down. So actually for a human to do this, you can do this for perhaps like three or four seconds, um, but not sustained flight upside down. And uh, so this was done by machine learning algorithm, not for busy networks, uh, but I thought that it's quite an interesting example of how it can augment where people, uh, the human, limit, uh, human is limited as well. So uh, things also like fighter jets right now, um, the human reaction speed is not fast enough to, to, fly human, uh, to fly a fighter jet. And so I think what is interesting or the biggest application area is uh, how do you augment the human uh, in, in the future as well. So thank you.